Hello and welcome to my workshop. My name is John. I live near Cincinnati. I am a radio hobbyist. What you're looking at today is a 1963 Arvin clock radio tabletop model. Uh, it's a nice little radio. I've been working on it. Um, today we're going to be fixing the dial cord that goes around the tuning wheel and a couple other knobs and pins and pulleys. And um, So this is my first one. Um, first dial cord replacement, so you can kind of judge uh, my, from my difficulty how hard it will be for you to do it. What we have here is a copy of the SAMS PhotoFact diagram of the placement for the dial cord. You can see in the upper right hand corner the large wheel is connected to the tuner. Uh, both ends of the dial cord are going to be connected to a spring inside that wheel and they're going to wrap around the wheel in opposite directions uh, and they will uh, in turn uh, one side will wrap around the uh, tuning control knob that the user will use uh, three turns hit a pin and then a pulley and then a couple more pins uh, there are three pins all together uh, one pulley and one large wheel and um, that pretty much comprises the whole system Okay, so now I'll give you a brief rundown of uh, what we just looked at on the schematic. Um, up here in the front is um, the indicator. You'll see the little red knob here. Uh, this lets the user know where he's at on the station dial. Uh, basically, this is clamp on this radio. It's clamped onto the cord. After we get the cord on in position. This will be clamped onto it. The diagram we just looked at didn't actually show the pointer on there. But um, because we have to have the, capac the tuning capacitor all the way closed, all the way to the left, um, that pointer is going to be clamped on at the very um, front end of the dial, the down by 550. And here we're going to open up the tuning capacitor. You can see the large wheel is connected directly to it. Uh, this wheel is what the uh, dial cord will be wrapped around. Um, and as you, the user turns the uh, control knob, uh, the dial cord will turn that tuning capacitor and also will move the pointer on the front. Here is the uh, tuning control knob, which is actually hooked up to nothing at all. You can see that it spins freely. Um, it's just a pulley, basically, at this point, until we get the cord on it. Here you're going to see the three pins that we found on the diagram. This is the bottom pin, and these two pins on the other side um, go into the canal where the actual little pin is that the user can use to see where he's at on the station dial. The wheel um, that this is going to connect around after it hits that pin is on the front of the radio, so I'm going to have to turn it around and kind of pick it up and show you where that wheel is at and it's right there okay okay so now we're ready to go ahead and install our new cord onto the radio I have a new cord here I just uh, purchased this it had just arrived in the mail today I purchased it through the internet from a fellow named Bob who runs a little website and sells these reproduction items this is a very strong cord this is exactly what I needed uh, I used some smaller cord um, yesterday in trying to fix this radio. It snapped. Uh, this cord is very strong. I got from Bob. It's not going to snap. As you can see, I've got my first loop on there, and I'm going to show you how to make this loop on the other end uh, at the end of this video. This is called a perfection loop, and what it does is it gives you a small loop to attach to that spring that's inside the large wheel. And um, here's Bob's antique radios and electronics pamphlet that came with the uh, cord. So now um, what we're going to do is hook this up to the spring. We're going to hook the spring up to the large wheel and we're going to run this cord through the whole system and then bring it back to the wheel and back to its final resting position. And what that will do is give us an exact length of what we need this cord to be. And I'm going to mark that length with a piece of uh, masking tape. First I hook up the sp spring and I run it uh, through the notch on the wheel. Uh, the gang is fully closed as it's um, suggested in the uh, schematic. Run it through the first pin, through the second pin, 
I'm going to mess around here a little bit. Eventually it's going to go across the front of the radio from here. You can see this uh, canal right here, this little um, crevice, the opening. Uh, the cord's going to have to go through there to the other side of the dial to where it connects with the wheel. And uh, it'll go around the wheel. It'll come back here to this point and um, of course go around the the tuning control knob and then the large wheel back to the spring. Uh, right now I'm going to just cut the video because I wasted too much time with this section. So just bear with me just for a second please. Okay now I've got the uh, cord. I stretched it across the front of the dial uh, to give us an approximate length of how much cord is going to be used there. And I'm doubling it back. I'm going to send it back to the third pin. Uh, wrap it around the tuning control knob, the three turns that it needs to be there. And then I'm going to wrap around the uh, opposite side of the large wheel, all the way around to the right, and then back to the spring. And what this will do uh, is give me a, an approximate length of how long our, this particular cord is going to need to be. Of course, let me wrap it around the... Uh, volume control or the uh, tuning control knob three times bring it around the large wheel drop it back through the notch and right there where you see the loop connect the other loop connected to the spring that is exactly uh, pretty much how long this cord is going to need to be and right there is our point I'm going to mark that with a piece of tape and we're going to call that our apex um, and uh, this is actually still connected to the spool of cord string uh, so it's I'm going to give myself an extra five or six inches of cord in order to uh, make that final loop knot okay um, so I've got the length of our cord and I'm going to take a piece of tape and mark that so we're going to call this our apex. This is the exact length that we need that farthest loop on this end to be in order to match up properly. And now we're going to spend a little time talking about the perfection loop knot, uh, which is what we're going to tie on to the end of the cord. This knot is absolutely important to your project. Um, it will give you a loop that will let you attach it to the spring on the large wheel. Now, um, do not be intimidated by this. I know the bottom part looks like a bowl of spaghetti. Uh, the top part, however, is a knot that you made, have made probably 10,000 times in your lifetime as a kid with kite strings and everything else. It's a very simple knot in a string. Uh, the bottom part, um, the only addition to that easy knot is the colored part, and you just add that on. So you follow the steps. Print this out and follow the steps. Very easy to do. Go to the link down below on Flickr. Copy this. Print it out. You'll be okay. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, hooked up. I ran it through the, the whole system. I've got everything hooked up except the last loop. I'll show you how that hooks up. I've got, um, I've got it coming in from the bottom there. So it's coming... Uh, directly up. I want to put a little tension on this spring. You need to have tension on that spring. If there's no tension on the spring, your dial cord is too long. Um, that tension on the spring is going to keep the cord from slipping on the control knob that the user turns. Um, and you don't want slippage because that's going, that's just not going to make the radio work properly. So it takes a little doing. Um, Sorry about blocking the film there, but I finally got, I used a pair of needle nose pliers to grab the loop, and I got it hooked up to the spring, and you can see the spring has a significant amount of tension on it, which is good. We want that there. So you want to just grab the uh, wheel and turn that capacitor a couple of times to get all the kinks out of the wire. There might be a couple of kinks in there. Uh, everything will stretch out and um, it'll just fall right into place 
uh, give it a few turns and you'll be good there. Then we're going to put the knob on and make sure that uh, there's no slipping that it will open and close the tuner very easily. After that all we need to do is connect the pointer on the front of the radio and we're done with this dial cord. Now it's time to connect that red pointer to the dial cord. Uh, we're going to have to do that from underneath and I've got a special very small pair of tweezer needle nose pliers uh, that'll tackle that task. I don't think the camera is going to be able to get a good picture of the um, uh, the little clamp on on the inside of that red thing. What it basically is is three ears. One ear bends forward, the other two ears bend back on either side. You slip the cord underneath the middle ear and then you clamp them all three tight. And that clamps the uh, the the pointer tightly to the dial cord. And uh, of course we have the tuning capacitor gang closed which means it's at the very far left side of the dial at 550 and this you can see we've got the pointer all the way to the left side of the dial and that's where we're going to clamp it to the cord right I apologize but my camera angle is just not going to let you see um, inside that cavity to see those um, ears on the pointer bend around the cord uh, but I am using a pair of very thin needle nose pliers to get in there and do that and uh, it does it does attach very firmly very nicely uh, you don't want to over attach it because the edges of those sharp uh, points on that pointer will poke a hole in that cord and we don't want that and now we're at the top of the dial and we're going all the way back to the end of the dial I'd say job finished we did a pretty good job and I'm pretty happy so thanks for watching I hope you learned something I did uh, it was fun uh, even more fun videotaping so uh, let me know what you think if you feel like writing any comments let me know I'm, I'm really happy to hear it um, have a great day and hopefully I'll come up with something else later <laughs>